Greetings and salutations, malefactors and YouTubers. We're back working on this cam still. So, the manual is actually not a lot of help on these 400s. It just says replace the chain if you need to. And then to pull these guides out of here to buy you some more space, you're supposed to pull the head. So I've been mulling over pulling the head. But I got some advice from uh, someone on Facebook who's actually worked on these a good bit. And their advice was if I can get it fed mostly on one side, crank it and feed it on like a dirt bike chain. I'm a little nervous about doing that because I don't think these cam chains are super strong. But at this point, I don't know, I'm kind of I'm kind of the mind of that. There's a lot of stuff to peel off here if I do the head. So I might go ahead and just take that advice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing oriented and start cranking. I know you're supposed to only go clockwise on this, but uh, counterclockwise I mean but we're going to uh I'm gonna try some advice if I notice it starts uh, looking a little grim I'm going to back off of it so Mm. All right, what was the advice here? Pull both sides taut and slowly feed it onto there and it'll just pop into place. Oh, bye Jove. You know, this is why you listen to somebody on the forums that's over the age of 50 or 60 who's been doing this stuff longer than I've uh, been a concept in this universe. And don't look like there's any damage to the splines, no damage to the teeth, fed right on. Well, hot damn. Now the only problem is I'm going to have to find the timing on this deal, which will be a bit of a headache. Yeah, but, you know, a little bit of a wood dowel in there and crank it once you have the flywheel back on, get it to top dead center. And it's not that hard to find top dead center whenever you've pulled it out of time, but, you know, it is what it is. Well, now I've got everything ready for whenever UPS decides to grace me with my new missing parts and broken parts from the previous video. I need to go look up that post so I can definitely write a special uh, special thank you to the person who gave me this idea. Man, you don't know how happy I am. Now in the previous short, to get the chain off, I, I let it drop behind the uh, guard there, couldn't get it out for the life of me. So there's some really interesting footage of me destroying a few tools and stuff trying to get the old chain off. Uh, as I said, 50 subscribers, we will uh, release those blooper reels and you guys will get to have a good hearty laugh at my expense. And trust me, it's a, it's definitely a laugh and it's definitely at my expense. At any rate, I'm going to kind of get this thing sewed together and get it kind of, uh, get it kind of ready for uh, getting these cams back in. And hopefully, I'll have this done by today. And if I don't, we're going to be doing a review on one of those Amazon LED lights. That little light up there doesn't shine very well, so to enhance my time that I have available to work on this, I got one of those uh, LED screw-in 10,000 lumen special thingamajiggers, well, whatever. So we're going to be reviewing one of those while I'm working on this. And with any luck... Tomorrow I'll have it back together, take it around the backyard for 30 minutes as per the break-in instructions, pull the head back off, do another valve check, 
adjust anything that needs to be adjusted at this point and then past that then uh, hopefully we'll get some footage of me actually getting to ride this thing instead of just work on it forever so in the meantime thanks for hanging in there I know this is a short video today but I can't uh, you know browbeat you guys with hour-long content every single time so like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and what's coming up next is the reassembly and hopefully firing this bad boy up and not driving my valves into the piston head well, have a good day <coughs> greetings and salutations malfactors and youtubers we're back and starting the reassembly process of our WR400 so what you guys didn't get a good shot of last time was me fitting this chain guide in and also to other, also to other amusement. Oh, that was a tight fit. Anyways, so you're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts holding your uh, cam guide in. Uh, trying to get a good vantage point here. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna grab my uh, extension. Huh, there we go. Ooh, yeah, you don't wanna use a stubby, you need something a little deep reach because there's not a ton of room to work with this. So anywho, you'll get your adjustment shoe Get your 10 millimeter in there. And this is gonna be at seven inch pounds. And at seven inch pounds, 7.2 foot pounds. So let will be grabbing the handy dandy inch pound torque wrench here in a little bit. And the reason I like to drive everything in by hand first is the uh, ugly specter of cross-threading isn't as big of a risk. Now there's nothing in the manual that said anything about uh, Loctiting these particular screws though they do recommend Loctite on the stator screws Alright, we got these hand snug as a bug in a rug and you don't need those out to uh, put on the cams you just need the tensioner out all right so I grab a couple of tools here ah, there we go that's the only thing about these uh, three-eighths to quarter inch adapters they're a little bit hard to fish out As you guys saw in one of the previous videos, this is good for a spark plug tool when you're working on your bike. Well, before I relocate my uh, relocate my deal here, and finish this service up, I'm gonna need to find my valve uh, valve deal. Eh, whatever. I'll worry about that at some other time. Alrighty, so we got our inch pound torque wrench. All right, here's the part. We're gonna be secret here for a second. calculator all right so this part we leave in here seven foot pounds times 12 is gonna be 84 inch pounds and as I always say go 10 to 15 percent lower so we're gonna go to 74 inch pounds all right we're at 70 we'll do 72 inch pounds to start so the big deal is you don't want to just start wrenching these things to 
Holy hell. And I mean, yeah, I've calibrated this, but <sighs> torque wrenches, they're close, but there's usually like a one or two percent uh, variance with them. All right, so that's at 70. So we're gonna go to 80 inch pounds. 82 is our target number. 80 should still be pretty safe. And I don't want to wind up like with my case bolts up there where I'm breaking stuff off. Now the only downside is I don't have a Torx, a Torx bit. I didn't realize I didn't have a socket Torx. So those are going to have to be done by feel. As much as I absolutely love that idea. Yeah, there's still some of the uh, previous stud locker in there. So let's get our Torx bolts out. Hmm. I appear to be one shy. Well, it probably just dropped out while I was working on stuff. Hello, wolf spider. I'm gonna fish more of my parts out of here and not let you get a hold of me. Uh, I will freely admit I am not fond of spiders. Come on, get off of my tensioner. Get off of the tensioner. You know what, I don't need that part yet. You know what, spider, you just, you just keep it gold over there, away from me. Yeah, I'm gonna need to clean these, uh, clean these bad boys off. Fine, I'll just bathe them in oil. Oh, where'd that last torque spit go? Usually I'm so good about keeping all my stuff together too. I might have dropped out while I was fumbling with stuff. As bolts are sometimes wont to do. Well, I'll pause video and go for a search in my messy garage real fast. Alrighty, tracked that feller down. It was a, uh, it was in the next bag over. <sighs> now what I need to find, and I just totally moved it and misplaced it, was my uh, Torx, Torx driver kit. So what I'm gonna need to do also, oh, here we go. What I'm gonna need to do before I put all this stuff technically back together all the way is uh, give it a nice oil bath and make sure I get all the particulate off of it. So, uh, sneak our skater back on. Got these and my brand new Permatex. Cause I go through this quite a bit. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I get a little bit of schmutz on there. Not a big deal. It's all scrap wood from another project. If you're ever curious, yes, I'm absolutely terrible at woodworking. That's a talent my uh, wife possesses, but I don't. 
<laughs> it came on kind of thick. Get you back home. And I will freely admit it's a little hard to figure out where these holes are. Cause you got the stator in the way. I think that's about right. There we go. All right, so this is gonna be, I believe also seven foot pounds. Unfortunately, as I said, I don't have Torx bits for my uh, socket. So this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be Ugga Duggas. I'm not going to thread them 100% of the way until I get all three in, make sure everything's kind of lined up. Also, uh, when you're putting back together your hot cams, they recommend that on the exhaust side or whatever side you use your hot cams on, that you go ahead and use thread locker as well. And sometimes having a, you know, sometimes having a third arm would be awesome. Or having the right tool for this. And it's technically the right tool, it's just, you know, a socket and extension would be pretty awesome. <sighs> Might have to go to Harbor Freight and grab that along with the new chain breaker. So I broke that yesterday. I broke the chain breaker. Stop Logic Motorsports breaker of chain breakers. All right, got that fed in a little bit. How that fed in? Is it fed up? You know, this is actually, even though it's a blind stab, this is actually one of the easier things that I've reassembled on this. Oh, I was really hoping that would be my uh, UPS truck. <laughs> If that's a dude trying to sell me meat again, I'm going to get mad. There's like this dude around here that like goes around trying to sell folks meat. And I'm pretty uncomfortable with the concept of buying meat off of a truck. I mean, I'm from Texas, but even, even I have my scruples. I don't know how I feel about truck meat. So I had to tighten my tool up, it's just flopping around all over the place. You know, a man my age, who got performance issues. No, I'm just kidding. Ah. By the way, if you've never seen Robin Hood Men in Tights, I recommend seeing it. Dom DeLuise is a 
Pun movie's hilarious. So at seven foot pounds, basically I'm just gonna do this a little more than hand tight. Get a little ugga dugga. And hope this is very close to seven foot pounds. So yes, for once, I'm breaking my own rule about use a torque wrench, stupid. More around. Alright. <sighs> so from here, when you're wanting to put back on your uh, flywheel, you need your woodruff key. So in this little doohickey, this is the old woodruff key, which I mean doesn't look like it's nicked or damaged or broken or otherwise, you know, done up. But the manual says new. When I see the word new, I take it fairly seriously. So, where is our little woodruff key? There's a new head gasket. Shims. Well, hello, friends. New wood repeat and new uh, tensioner gasket. Come here, Woodruff. So, the big deal about putting in your Woodruff key. As I say, I try and make it like even with the spawn. Not very descriptive. So here's basically what I can gather on it. Pull some oil off of the uh, bike and rub it on the woodruff key. Is that you feed this little feller into here. I guess maybe I should do that before the stator got on, but it. The order says do it differently, so. Alright. So we have our Woodruff key. And supposedly. I'm supposed to line up the spine. And as I feed this, uh, feed this on, the Woodruff key will spin and lock the uh, flywheel into the correct area. Oi. Yeah, buddy, we're gonna need to we're gonna need to tell tell you off. Goodness. Got some metallic gunk in there. Well, looks like we're gonna have to do a little more and just towel you off. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's like metallic engine flakes in there. <sighs> well then. We're gonna try with the uh, gentle cleaner first. I'll re-oil all this here in a little bit. But we're gonna try the gentle cleaner first. Move it spider bag. I don't have much of this left.
you know what? I'm going to give this a break while I finish cleaning this thing. I don't think you guys want to watch me clean this thing for the next 30 minutes. As riveting as that is. So, I ran out of scrubbing bubbles. So I went ahead and hit it with a carb cleaner and a shop rag. It took a couple of runs of carb cleaner and shop rag, but we got this stator or magneto back to where it's going. Ah. <sighs> But it is looking a ton better. I didn't realize that there was all that metallic sludge flakes. So it's not bad to put your uh, engine through a little bit of a clean every once in a while. I'm going to let this uh, dry out for a few more minutes while we wait on um, UPS to get here with the rest of my parts. And we're going to feed this bad boy back on. And then at that point... We should be just about ready to wait on the cams, so I'm going to have to crank this bad boy back to top dead center. Do a little clean off of the top here. A little bit of schmutz has gotten in, but I've been pretty good about keeping stuff out of it. So, I'm going to take a little bit of a break here wash my hands get this carburetor cleaner off of them take stock in what where we're at so far and look at the torque value for this i believe it's uh 37 pounds but you know what i don't want to guess so i'm gonna do a little bit of a little bit of sitting around and ciphering and uh we'll be back here in a little bit and we're back well, I did a little research. Actually, I was a little bit wrong. You're supposed to make that Woodruff key uh, basically center line with your uh, shaft there. So you might need to take a little something pokey and poke at it. But you need to center that Woodruff key, yeah, basically equal to center line. So it's going to have a little bump up like that. And this is 35 foot pounds. So we're going to. Uh, Work on that here in a second. I'm just getting my uh, flywheel puller out of the way. I'll put that toy up a little later. Pretty good tool though. Anyways, this is set long enough. Hey, it's nice and clean now. There's maybe just a smidge of schmutz in it. But uh, you always wonder if those magnetic drain plugs are super effective. I don't think it'd be as effective as a uh, huge hockey puck sized magnet color me a little bit skeptical so you make sure you line up your uh, tooth here with your Woodruff key otherwise it doesn't go back together quite right do 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 do, do. Got a little bit of leftover shop rag on this thing. Yeah, I blew through two shop rags cleaning this off too. It's much dirtier than I originally thought. All right, where's my Woodruff key? Oh, goodness. All right, push that Woodruff key back down. Or back even with the crankshaft. that's in there tell you what that is a hard stab let's shine this little light of mine yep we got a woodruff key in the right place well 
Let's double check. <sighs> Cut that out. Yeah, we're lined up. Super hard to see in there. <sighs> Toss on your washer. And clean your washer from all of that. Uh, oh yeah. <sighs> Tell you what, this thing was definitely a mess. Toss your washer on. Goodness. Come on, Michael. Did you already lose the nut on here? Got so wound up about a dirty state that you uh, set your nut down. Yeah, that tracks with me. Well, I'm going to need that here in a little bit. Oh, where did I put you? Right there in front of me. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. Alrighty. So this is 35 foot pounds. This time we don't need the inch-pound torque wrench. We need the regular torque wrench. Set you at... 35 foot-pounds. Toss a 14 millimeter on ya. First off, I'll get it hand tied as much as I can. Make sure we're on the tightening section. All right, so we'll need to adjust these in a little bit. There we go, got a five wheel holder. Yeah, I could do with it being a little firmer in there. Ugh. And your flywheel's back on. It's a little anticlimactic. I know, normally this would be a much bigger mess. Looks like we're in good shape. Let's give it a little cranky crank. Make sure we're all set up and seated. Yeah, I know I'm throwing my timing all sorts of, uh, all sorts of off. But whatever, I can retime a bike. Luckily it's fixed time. It seems like that's on there correct. So where do we go from here? Well, hopefully we don't drop any more metal into this and scratch this up. I think I will manage to be a little more careful. Ugh. As I drop the spare woodruff key, toss it in our handy dandy spot over here Alrighty And before we do anything as always we clean out whatever we put in 
you go through all this trouble to take this thing apart, you don't want to reintroduce all of that schmutz back into it. Luckily this isn't magnetized, uh, magnetized years of engine neglect. Oh goodness. Get back on there, gasket. Normally you can reuse a stator gasket, but if it starts to leak, I'll just get another one or use a little bit of RTV. Not a big deal. Oof. Some nasty stuff in there. Alrighty. Line this bad boy back up. Give it a little gentle encouragement. And then we reach into the spider bag. And it looks like our friend is gone. Thank goodness, man, I really dislike spiders. They give me the willies. take a break while I do some more boring stuff. Because I doubt you guys want to watch me put on a stator cover. As absolutely riveting as that is. Actually, you don't want to use a riveting tool for it. A little motor humor there. But we're going to do some more boring, boring reassembly stuff. So I'll catch you guys in a few.